In this video, we'll be replacing the alternator in a Toyota Camry. First thing you want to do is disconnect the battery, and you're going to disconnect the negative side. Then you're going to remove the upper radiator support cover. There's about seven push pins that you're going to have to pull out, and then you can remove that cover. You want to disconnect the overflow tube from the reservoir. It's kind of hard to tell where the push pin is because it's got a rubber insulator. The push pins over on this side. It says push, but again, sometimes hard to see. You'll disconnect the two wires that go to it, to the alternator. You'll remove the engine cover that just pulls off. It's held down by clips. And then remove the air intake. There's three 10 millimeter bolts that hold that in. Then you're going to remove the upper radiator support. There are seven 10 millimeter bolts holding that down. He's using a ratcheting wrench. If you don't have those, uh, that's a great set to have in your toolbox. Looks like there's a plug in also for the latch, just to let the you know, driver know that their foot is not latched. So we'll have to disconnect that. And then he's just dis disconnecting the hood and the horn sensor connectors so he can pull that bracket out. Now you're going to remove the upper radiator hose. There is going to be some coolant that comes out, so you'll want to have some kind of container underneath to catch that. And then just push that hose out of the way. And then we're going to remove the radiator cooling fan, so he's just going to disconnect all those wires that are connected to the fan. He's just using a little pry tool there to pop those out. So the rest of this connectors can stay in the vehicle because it's they're not interrupting, it's all part of that assembly. So now I'm just going to start to push these little tabs together and that releases, there's three points, releases the radiator from the cooling fan. We're going to try and pull this up and out of here. You can also use a pair of pliers to push those pins to squeeze them together if you can't use, just do it with your hand and then carefully remove the fan. Then you're going to want to loosen the tensioner bolt that's holding the belt on tight. Uh, just a 19 millimeter wrench and then you can just pull that belt right off of the alternator. Then there are two 14 millimeter and two 12 meter millimeter bolts that are holding that alternator in. You'll need to remove those. Just be careful when you take those bolts off that you don't drop them. You can see that one is on the underside. Might need a small extension to reach that. It's actually, there's a bracket on this. Um, the bracket holds the wire glue. So there is a bracket there that you'll have to um, loosen that bolt up to remove the alternator. 
And then be careful as you're taking the alternator out that you don't do damage to the radiator when you're trying to pull that piece out. Once you get that out, you can put the new radiator or the new alternator in, and again, you'll want to tighten up that bracket that you loosened once you get it in place. I just put some dielectric grease on this because I want I don't want my bolt to fall off my socket. Grease. Yeah, you can use paper, a little bit of grease. It's nice for the really tight spots because you don't want to lose your bolt. You know? You'll notice that he's tightening those by hand first to make sure that they're lined up before he puts a ratchet on it so that you don't uh, strip those bolts that are going in. And you'll put the two 14 millimeters in at 32 foot pounds and the two 12 at 15 foot pounds. And then you're going to use your 19 millimeter wrench again to uh, take the pressure off of the tension off of the belt so you can reinstall that belt back onto the alternator pulley. Then you'll reinstall the radiator cooling fan. Be careful putting that back in place. So now it's important to make sure that it gets into the these little hold downs oh, okay. on the bottom of the fan shroud. Just to make sure, make sure the bottom of the radiator fan doesn't pull out. It's all in, it's all good. And then you'll just reinstall the wiring harness by pushing those plugs back into the fan assembly and then plug in the electrical connectors for the fan. You'll need to reinstall that upper radiator support, reconnect the sensors for the horn and reconnect that uh, hood latch. There are seven 10 millimeter bolts and you're gonna just tighten those down to 10 foot pounds each. After you're finished with that, you can reinstall the wiring that, to the alternator and then the one 10 millimeter bolt and the nut. Then you'll reconnect the upper radiator hose and slide that clamp back down in place. Reinstall the air intake and tighten those three 10 millimeter bolts down to nine foot pounds. Then you can reconnect that negative battery cable and tighten that down at 10 millimeter down to nine foot pounds. Put the engine cover back on. You can just push it into place. Then you're gonna need to add coolant to the radiator. Reconnect your hose back to the overflow. And you're going to want to refill the coolant. I'm just squeezing the upper radiator hose just to try and help any air that may be trapped somewhere to expel itself. If the air is circulating in the system, it will get caught in the heater core. It can, it can provide no heat. Um, it can also wear the impeller on the water pump. And so it'll actually, over time, because you know, you're smashing it with air, it can actually wear holes through a water pump impeller. Um, so yeah, air is not good. Once the engine is at operating temperature and the coolant is full, you're just going to replace the radiator cap. Then you'll reinstall the radiator cover. And again, those are just seven push pins. And you're all set.